Okay, well, welcome to Linux Music One. This week we're going to look at uh, a little bit of uh, content consumer stuff, how to uh, rip, grip, uh, flack, uh, metadata, that kind of stuff. And I would only say if you haven't seen last week's on um, how uh, pulse code modulation works, you should probably watch that before this. But otherwise, uh, here we go on some consumer audio consumer stuff. Let's uh, let's get started. Well, okay, let's get started here. Uh, if you come from a Windows environment um, and you really care about uh, the rips that you get, then you probably know EAC. On Linux, CD Paranoia is the same thing. Uh, Paranoia is a project that is a really, really robust Linux interface that's meant to just read CD drives. Uh, CD Paranoia is its it's got an app for reading CD audio off those drives, and it doesn't re-record anything. It just reads the LPCM data. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you should check the prior video. But uh, it, it's going to try to take care of jitter. It's going to do whatever it can. So the first thing you do when you have CD Paranoia installed is just get a check. Put in CD Paranoia. Dash. A and it's going to analyze things and it's going to go check your drive and see what it can do and tell you all kinds of uh, details about your drive. Uh, go look at it, uh, see if it can get a good rip. And this thing's intentionally made for no matter what CD drive you have, no matter how old it is, how obscure it is, uh, it's got a, an entire bag of tricks where it'll go out and try to uh, determine uh, just what it is. Uh, that your drive has so that it knows how well it can do. It's a really interesting product and it's worth reading uh, the the documentation on it yourself because we're going to see some of these guys. It's a command line tool and we're going to look at a GUI for it in a minute, but the GUI utilizes some of the coding and characters that they use in the CD Paranoia project, so it's worth going to read to see what, what does a happy smiley face mean? What is a What's a frown mean and, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to cut this off for a minute. And I happen to have a, a CD in the drive. We'll take a look at it and we'll CD Paranoia. And it'll go out and uh, take some take some quick look at it. Uh, it happens to be Coco Taylor, Queen of the Blues. And so we're going to, we're going to, look at a GUI here in a minute and we're going to take the CD Paranoia and it will mix. I, I like to rip to FLAC. FLAC is, uh, again, if you didn't see last week, you should. Uh, FLAC is lossless, so it will uh, create, I mean, given a, given a decent uh, bit rate and bit depth, it'll create a perfect copy of whatever is the is the audio that's on there. So we're going to, and since this thing's reading the digital audio right off of it, uh, your FLAC is only really taking that digital audio and putting it in a lossless format, compressing it. Uh, for myself, I like to use the, the level A compression. That's the best it's got. And I find that it gives me a five to 8% reduction over, over say, uh, 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 zero quality and Remember, this is lossless, so it's gonna, you're not losing any bits. The music's going to be exactly the same uh, as what you're, you're ripping. So uh, with nothing more being said here, let's jump up and take a look at Grip. And Grip is kind of cool because, as I said, here's Coco Taylor, Queen of the Blues. Uh, great show. Well, I mean, rest in peace, Coco, but uh, once upon a time, great, great show. Uh, so, GRIP is a tool that combines CD Paranoia uh, and CDDB lookup. So it went out and it read my drive off someplace out in the in the net, and we'll look at in a minute how we set up the CDDB lookup. Uh, and it's also going to encode it to FLAC 
all in kind of a, a couple passes on the same thing, so it makes it pretty easy. But let's go look at the config. Uh, here's some, some just tells it what device it is. When we rip, we're going to use CD Paranoia. We're not going to disable any of these features. It's going to go out, and we're not going to disable any of the CD Paranoia uh, functions where, so we can get the best possible rip that we can that we can get. Uh, auto eject after rip, that's got up to you. Now we're getting into, I'm, I encode mine to FLAC. There's a whole bunch of different things hooked here. Basically, whatever uh, encoders you have on your system, it'll grab them and look them up. So that, uh, we're, but we're going to do FLAC. We're, no matter what happens, you need to do the dash V option because that's going to verify. What it's going to do is it's going to grab it. It's going to read it from the CD, it's going to write it to the drive, and it's going to verify that it got a good read. The dash 8 is for uh, FLAC. There's also a dash dash best. Uh, this is, uh, grab the, I don't even remember what this is. I'll put the file name, something like that. Uh, the guy who wrote GRIP says keep this at M and W. That keeps the file name uh, in sync from the CD to the, to the disk copy. Uh, I delete the wave after encoding. If you're a little bit nervous, you could uncheck that. And so what's going to happen is uh, GRIP is going to use CD Paranoia, read the drive, write it out in raw, uh, well, not raw LPCM data, but write it out in WAV format, which is pretty close to raw LPCM data, then encode it to FLAC. Uh, it can leave the WAV files on there after it encodes them to FLAC, or it can, or it can delete them. Uh, I, I had this unchecked for the first, I don't know, a dozen times I used it, and once I, once I convinced myself that it was working well, I went ahead and checked this to delete the WAV files. ID3, it'll add tags to your encoded file. DiskDB, this is where it goes to look up to see uh, once you've loaded this disk in, what are the track names and, and those other things. Uh, and, and that's probably, the, for me, that's the most important part of the configs. So here we've got this, and if I come over here to rip, I can say rip and uncode, and it will automatically do all of them. If I just want one track, I can check mark that single track box. Uh, but in general, uh, it's going to do this whole thing. Now, if you want to add something to it, this little pencil will, uh, I had mine on, but it'll, it'll allow you to force a nature. Uh, a really good disk and basically type in various things here and there to uh, edit the the data that's going to go into the tags on the rip and I mean honestly that's about it I mean it, it's grip great job I've, I've used it for probably three or four hundred CDs now uh, there is one thing I'll show you in a minute, but it's a CDDB thing, not a not a grip thing, but it's kind of fun. But uh, but that's it. And so uh, one one last thing that's kind of interesting is sometimes uh, things aren't uh, ripped and normalized so that they all play at the same loudness. Or maybe your friend recorded something and it's too loud or too quiet or whatever that is, and and it's not even a commercial CD. It's it's something your friend made, and if if you've encoded it to FLAC, uh, first off, you can meta FLAC, which is the command to uh, to. And by the way. You'll notice here we're on the Sandman thing. I'm not in Cocoa anymore. We happen to be in a folder that's uh, something else entirely, so don't look for Cocoa Taylor stuff in here. But Metaflack will give you details about all the metadata on the FLAC files that are stored on the disk. So if I put Metaflack uh, splat or dash dash list uh, for all of them, it goes out and looks at them and gives you all kinds of information. Uh, and Usually the first stuff's not of much interest. It's where the seek tables uh, pointers are on this. But it, it'll come down here. It's uh, where I come from. Who is the artist? Mark Sandman. Uh, where did I get it? I got it from the Cure for Pain, the video extras. It's track number 10, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, 
by the way, another another great artist, if I can put that in there, Coco Taylor and Mark Salmon, two very good choices. Uh, one thing you can do, though, that I wanted to show you Metaflack for is you can come in here, and I can say Metaflack, add dash, double dashes uh, for all the options, add, replay, play, if I could type. Try that one more time. Gain. Splat. What this is going to do is it's going to consider this whole folder an album. It's going to read down through every one of the flag files, find the uh, peaks, and tell you what for that album uh, uh, the, the normalization factors are and what for that track the normalization factor is and it'll write a tag out to the to the video now why is that important the, the deal here is can you go into some uh, audacity or uh, ardor or any of the digital audio workstations slam a normalized function over this and have have this thing all leveled out well of course you can but then it's not lossless anymore it is not exactly what came off the disk so what we want to do is uh, by doing it this way, what we've done is we've left all those bits exactly as they came off the disc. We haven't touched that at all, but we've added a tag that's going to say add replay gain of minus 8 dB. And a lot of the players these days can read that tag and will act accordingly. So without changing any bits, we've uh, given it some, you know, play, that, play this one a little louder, play that one a little softer information uh, that'll, that can, can help us with... Uh, you know, just level and I, you know how much you hate it when a tune comes on, it's real loud, you got to turn it down a little bit, it comes on, it's too soft, you walk over, you turn it up a little bit, what a pain in the butt. So add replay gain if you're using the right uh, players, the right uh, clients, uh, we'll read that tag and take care of that for you. So that, that was one freebie, but here's another interesting thing I want to show you, and this is on uh, CDDB. And I'm pulling out my Coco Taylor disc, and you have to take my word for this because I don't have a video camera. You can only see what's on my screen, but I swear to you uh, that I'm putting in Stevie Ray Vaughan's uh, "The Sky Is Crying." Uh, I'm putting that in. Hold on, let's get back to grip. Here we are. I'm closing the CD drive. It reads the disc, it goes out to CDDB, finds out what disc am I listening to, and it comes out and says the gentle side of John Coltrane. Why you can put a Stevie Ray Vaughan honestly acquired commercial disc, I bought it up in a music store, uh, in your drive and have it go look up what that is and come back and tell you it's the gentle side of John Coltrane, I have no clue. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like John Coltrane, I like Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, but I don't think they knew each other, and I certainly uh, would not think the gentle side of John Coltrane has much to do with Stevie Ray Vaughan, so I'll leave that as a mystery for you to try to figure out why, when you put in Stevie Ray Vaughan, does it think you're listening to John Coltrane. Other than that, uh, that's it. See you next week. Okay, I don't know if that was helpful to you, but I, I hope that it was. Uh, certainly working through all those details on the uh, options for uh, grip, uh, how to best rip with CD Paranoia, that was very helpful to me in getting uh, all, the, all the music on the streaming server as we discussed for my how I spent my summer vacation. Anyway, next week we return to Content Creators. We're going to look at Harmony Sequencer, uh, which is a... MIDI sequencer that is really oriented towards uh, improvisational performance, which, you know, I mean, if you think about it, a sequencer and uh, improvisational, it's kind of an oxymoron. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting application. I, I think you'll like it. So uh, that's it for this week. Any questions, let me know. And otherwise, I'll, I'll see you next week.